How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the top 5 cheap track cars that you can buy for under £5,000. These are the type of track cars that beginners could take on and I just think it's a really good set of cars that you guys could go out, take onto the track, whether you're bad at driving fast around the track or good at driving fast around the track and just really enjoy yourself. Now there are a lot more cars than the 5 that I'm talking about in this video and I'd like to talk about more of them so if you guys enjoy this video do let me know in the comments down below and I'll make more videos like this because I've got a long list of all the cars that I think are great to buy for track days. I'll be focusing on the track usability of these cars are so slightly different to my normal top fives but you should still remember that whenever you're buying any second-hand car maintenance repairs insurance tax all that good stuff is quite important to remember on top of that as well remember that I'm in the UK so I make it from the UK market perspective so prices in other countries may differ bringing back the topic of the week this week what's your favorite track in the world mine is probably very basically the Nürburgring because I've driven it in real life and I've also done thousands of laps on it in racing games so what's your favorite track in the world let me know in the comments down below remember to like and subscribe for more wiki car content but without further ado Let's get into the video. I feel it would be rude to make a video about cheap track cars for beginners without mentioning the Mazda MX-5, and more specifically, the NA and NB MX-5s. I appreciate it because I own one, I am definitely biased, but there is a reason why these cars are irregular at track days all over the world. They are tremendous amounts of fun, handle incredibly well due to their near 50-50 weight distribution and lack of weight, as well as the fact that they're generally quite cheap to buy and run. They come with either a 1.6 or a 1.8 litre inline 4, but as a 1.8 owner, I'd recommend it for the extra power, as it puts so 131 brake horsepower in the NA, taking it from 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds. The MB is slightly quicker at 7.7 .7 seconds, thanks to 140 brake horsepower being produced by that 1.8. A key fun factor in these cars for track days is the fact that they're rear-wheel drive and not overpowered, so they don't generally want to slide, but it's easy enough to put the car into a bit of a power slide if you want to, if that makes any sense. The fact that both the NA and the NB weigh so little, at around 1,000 kilograms, also means that the engines aren't particularly stressed. This translates into pretty strong reliability, as long as you do some preventative maintenance and look after the car, it should treat you quite well. Rust, on the other hand, is something that these old Miatas are renowned for, so look out for that when on the hunt for a track car, as you don't want to be crashing a car that has poor structural integrity. Not that you really want to be crashing at all, but you get what I mean. But the ultimate benefit of getting an MX-5 as a track day car is the wealth of parts available. This is the key reason why I bought one. There are so many tried and tested aftermarket parts available for the car, and they are generally reasonably priced, so you can get your car into a decent spec for the track without spending too much money. I haven't really skimped out on price and yet I've spent about £2,000 to get a whole bunch of parts to get the car ready for the track. Check out this video if you'd like to see more. On top of this, there are plenty of MX-5 championships out there, particularly for the Mark 1, so if you're going all out track car, you can get into racing a series like the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Championship. NBs are the cheaper of the two though, starting at well under £1,000 for rust buckets, but I'd expect to spend between 1k to 1.5k to get one in decent condition. The NAs are starting to appreciate in value a little with time, so it might be slightly more expensive, but I picked mine up for a grand on eBay with limited rust, so it is possible to get them cheap still. So yes, I'm biased, but it really is an ideal car for track days and has the potential to get you into racing in the future. On a completely different motorsporting vein, we have the Renault Clio Renault Sport 182 taking 4th place, another car that is a regular at track days, and a car that many track driving schools have been known to use due to its manoeuvrability and ease of driving for beginners, particularly due to the fact that it's a front wheel drive car. It hosts a 2 litre 16 valve inline 4 putting out 182 brake horsepower, which takes from 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds, which is pretty decent for a car that looks as unassuming as this old Clio. Once again, I am biased with the Renault considering the classic rally car that my dad drives, but I honestly believe that if you've never been to a track day before and want to drive something that will give you bags of fun while making you feel generally safe, the 182 is an excellent choice. The RS that preceded it, the 172, came with a stripped out cup edition, which may have been more suited to track driving, but it's quite expensive nowadays still, so the 182 offers the happy medium, particularly if you can get one with the optional cup suspension that drops the ride height a little and stiffens the feel up a little bit more too. In terms of track usability, I spoke with an owner who noted the car's handling is particularly responsive even unmodified, which allows you to build up a much better cornering speed than many faster cars, partially making up for the loss that you might see in a straight line. This also bodes well for beginners. You want a car that will consistently do the same thing when you apply any inputs, rather than something that's hard to keep under control. Like the MX-5, although to a lesser extent, there is plenty of mods out there that you can get for the 182, and I've heard that the Bilstein B14 shocks have a marked impact on the handling, beyond the cup shocks. Bucket seats will fit nicely too, and there are even aftermarket interior trims created to replace the rear seats if you're looking to save some extra 
extra weight and don't have many friends. You'll get one of these for as little as £2,000 for a higher mileage example, but around £3,500 will get you on with around 70,000 miles on the clock, which isn't too bad considering this is also generally appreciating year on year thanks to its popularity. In terms of reliability, despite carrying the stereotype of being a French car on its back, the outlook is pretty good. Good maintenance is essential, particularly with regards to the cam belt changes every six years. Other common issues include the rattling inlet cam timing variator, oil leaking, and the synchros between second and third gear. Overall though, in my opinion, a solid car for track days, and if you're a beginner, this is probably the car I'd recommend most. Going back to rear wheel drive now, we have the Porsche Boxster 986 taking third in this list. There are three engines to choose from, the 2.5, the 2.7 and the 3.2 which is found in the S model. Going on price, you can pick up a 2.7 for around £3,000 for a cheap example, but £5,000 would get you on with around 100,000 miles on the clock, so it might be worth considering. You can actually get an S within this price range too, but I'd suggest that if you're going for a 3.2 and your budget allows, spend a little bit more up top as you do get a decent package with it. However, the 2.7 litre flat 4 puts out 228 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 6.2 seconds. If you can stretch to the 3.2, then you could take your Boxster beyond a track day and into an actual racing series with events like the Race Spec Porsche Boxster class in the BRSCC Porsche Championship available to the 986S. If you can't afford an S, then you can still rest assured that many of the parts you'd put onto the 3.2 to get it track ready are also available for the 2.7 and the 2.5, so you can still turn your car into the ultimate track day car. The chassis on the Boxster is already known for being well balanced and if you spend the money on some strong shocks like the expensive Olins the car will feel like a track monster. Also probably worth getting that hard top roof and a roll bar for good measure. The key problem with the Boxster is that because it's a Porsche OEM parts are slightly more expensive than the other cars in this list. Aftermarket costs aren't too dissimilar though with those Olin shocks I mentioned being around 2 gram for the Boxster and 1.8 gram for the MX-5 I mentioned previously. What I'd say though is that the 986 offers a good all-rounder for people who aren't planning to make their car entirely track focused. You could put a set of relatively cheap H&R springs on one, a good set of tyres, some uprated brake pads and drive it to a track, put in some laps, drive it home afterwards like a regular everyday Porsche. In terms of reliability, look for one of the good service history as my main advice and ignore the mileage as some of the common problems actually arise from lack of use. Other common issues include the dreaded cracked bore liners, which is actually quite rare but worthy of note, worn chain guides on the Vario Cam timing chain tensioner, IMS bearing failure, RMS failure and roof issues, but rust is generally not a problem on these cars. One of my favourite cars in this list for sure, but given the longer term expense, maybe not the absolute best for what you want to achieve. But if you have the money, well worth thinking about for sure. Onto a car that I've spoken about plenty of times previously, the Subaru or the Subaru or the Subaru or the Scooby Impreza WRX. Specifically, the blob eye with the 2 litre flat 4 or boxer 4 putting out 215 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds, although both of those figures may be slightly conservative as Japanese manufacturers are renowned for purposefully underestimating their performance figures. The Impreza is one of my all time favourite cars, hence it's appeared in so many of my previous videos, so watch one of those for a full understanding of the car. But given the car rallying history, it certainly is a prime candidate for track days and is, in my opinion, at the very least the best sounding car on this list, so it will sound like you're going really quickly when out on track. The tuning potential on WRX is one key factor in making it a strong track prospect. A stage 1 remap can get upwards of 260 brake horsepower out of the engine, which consists of a remap, high flow air filter and uprated fuel pump. So in terms of going fast, the Scooby will really allow for it. On top of that, being the only all-wheel drive car on this list, it creates traction for the driver in a way that the rear-wheel drive and front-wheel drive cars on this list don't. Of all the discussions on WRX's handling by test drivers, my favourite quote was grip, grip and more grip, which is certainly something that can make you feel comfortable in a car on track. Compared to the other cars in this list too, it's a little more of an all-rounder. Not only does it have 5 seats and 4 doors, as well as a fairly sizeable boot, you could decide to spec it to be used on rally stages instead of on the track, which I'm not sure you could do in the MX-5 or the Boxster for example. £3,500 will get you a high mileage example, but I'd expect to pay around £5,000 for one in good working order and 70 to 80,000 miles on the clock. In terms of reliability, check for oil leaks from the cam covers and sump cover, and if you plan to tune over 350 brake horsepower, you'll need built internals. In addition, check the rear diff for leaks and listen for any whines from it. Final point would be rust, which is generally visible around the rear wheel arches, as well as the front radiator support panels and a few other points. Overall though, one of my favourite cars of all time, or at least it would be if it was an STI.
Taking the top spot with a 0-60 time of 5.7 seconds is the Nissan 350Z, a car often associated with the drift scene thanks to its rear-wheel drive setup, but one that has some transferable application to straight up boshing it around a track. It hosts a 35 liter V6 engine, putting out a minimum of 276 brake horsepower, depending on what version you go for. One very key reason why this car makes for a great track day car is its brakes. It comes with Brembo's as standard, which work very well, and braking is, in my opinion, one of the key parts of any good car on track. I would suggest that for a beginner, a set of 600 pound HSD coilovers might do the trick for getting out on track the first time and feeling comfortable in the car. However, one negative of the 350Z is that much of the aftermarket for parts is focused on the drift scene, with the track scene being somewhat more expensive generally. There are some amazing track builds out there though, and I saw one story of a German student who started with a stock 350Z, built it up over an extended period of time going to the Nürburgring, and ultimately turned it into a car that you could race in VLN, so there is scope to grow with the car. You can get one of these in acceptable condition for around £3,500 and £5,000 would get you on with around 80k on the clock. The best years to go for in terms of reliability are 2007 and 2008 due to some upgrades so aim for these despite them being just outside our 5k budget. However, other years aren't awful with common problems being the burning of oil, rare synchro issues and a few build quality failures like window motors. This car always reminds me of that boy racer style of life so maybe a little flashier on the roads but definitely don't underestimate its capability as a track car. I would say there are better track cars out there for the money and I'd personally go for the MX-5 over this, but it will still do the job and is the quickest car on this list. So I'm just running through the top five cheap track cars that you could buy for under £5,000. If you enjoyed the video, please do let me know in the comments down below, as well as not forgetting the topic of the week as well, what's your favourite track? As always, massive thanks to my patrons who should be on screen right now. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Listen.